What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So the Lenovo Legion Go got some updates here for December 1st, kind of kicking off the roadmap that Lenovo laid out uh, last week on November 24th with their last update. Now, of course, not everything's gonna be in here yet. They've got still plenty of time to get a lot of features and fixes in here, but there's a little bit more of a roadmap in this update for December 1st that we got yesterday at the time of making this video. And there's also a really nice update already out for Legion Space. Plus I've been testing the BIOS uh, the beta BIOS and beta GPU drivers, which have actually been working pretty well also. So we'll take kind of a look at all of that. But first, before we go and look at the actual changes on the Legion Go and some of the game performance with the differences, I do want to uh, quickly go over the post here and go over the changes that they're listing out. So the Legion Space update for December 1st, version 1023. Um, the controller-related improvements for um, Dead Zones and Xbox button mapping and whatnot are planned for later on in the next update. So the Dead Zone issues that a lot of us are waiting on uh, being able to work on aren't yet included in this update. Uh, the issue with not being able to change to 60 hertz from 144 when not plugged in has been fixed. Uh, there's seven additional languages that have been added. Uh, they've added some performance profiles to the right flyout menu. This would be the preset of performance mode for 30 watt TDP full fan OS performance mode, preset power saving mode, balanced TDP OS uh, efficiency mode, and then two custom slots to set whatever you want. We're going to take a look at all this on the overhead here in just a minute. Uh, open right menu and swap through profiles with left button and right button. Uh, this has taken place of game profiles for now. They're looking at a more robust, more robust option down the road. They've added a new quick settings tab to the flyout menu um, including the win plus d now this is something they've done as a temporary stopgap between the actual uh, mapping of all the buttons that we've been asking for and having more control there so we'll take a look at that a little bit more as well uh, escape similar to above you can at least use the flyout menu to input escape until uh, we get key mapping enabled so again they're doing some stopgap stuff here to kind of help alleviate some of our issues while they're working on official support inside of legion space for this kind of stuff uh, the virtual keyboard is still accessible through uh, the legion uh, l plus b uh, but you can but you now have additional access options Battery info has been moved to the top of the right flyout menu, uh, regardless of which tab you're on for quicker visibility. And I really like the look of this. Uh, again, we're going to take a look at that on the overhead, overhead here in just a minute. They've added a spiral rainbow option to the RGB stick lights and some other general improvements. And I have noticed that Legion Space, especially since launch, definitely feels a little bit more snappy now. I'm not getting near as many uh, issues with it that I uh, certainly had the first couple of weeks of launch. Now they have some planned updates here for the mid-December. Uh, joystick dead zone adjustment option, Xbox button map to Legion uh, plus RS, trackpad vibration switch, bug fixes for lighting effects, and fix for controller input duplication, and right menu and games. This one is a big one that's annoying me and a lot of other people when you bring up your quick access menu or that flyout menu and you're trying to do stuff, you still get game inputs and it just, <clears throat> it can be a bit of a mess. So I wind up trying to just use touch screen for now when I'm doing that. Planned updates for late December, early January. Uh, driver BIOS firmware updates incorporated in Allegiant Space, eliminating the need to rely on manual and alternate update paths, which will be great. DPI settings for trackpad and FPS mode. FPS limiter, which will include uh, 30, 36, 48, 60, 72, and custom, which is going to be really nice here. We'll have our slider and our custom options here. Adjustable fan curves in uh, space. Uh, that we'll be able to get into there. Ability to turn off light on power button, which I know some people have been asking for. Adjust automatic sleep timing on controllers. Uh, LTRT dead zone. Activation point adjustments tentative. So that's what they've got for that. And then they've got some planned updates for calendar Q1 of 2024. Um, key customization and key mapping, which is a high priority. Use of left and right triggers uh, for mouse clicks. Ability to hide uh, games in space, desktop mode or similar. Taskbar, system tray minimization of space, additional customization options for space. And there's a lot, of, a lot of improvements and features to come yet, but this is definitely a decent roadmap at least and some initial updates that they've been pushing out pretty quick. Now, they have a beta version of V28 of BIOS and they have a new VGA driver, which I mentioned. I've been using these for a few days. I'm actually getting some, some better, some improvements to performance and things like that over the uh, previous BIOS that I was using and the previous... Uh, drivers which actually dated back to September I believe it was um, 
for that. Official release looks like about mid-December for the GPU driver. Um, but yeah, they have the beta versions out for that as well. There's some stuff in here for parts and service and miscellaneous known issues that they're looking into uh, as well. I'll put a link to this um, post in the description if you want to go read through this yourself and get a little bit more into it. But I want to jump over to the overhead and actually take a look at some of the changes in Legion Space that we've got now. And uh, we'll see if we can pull up a couple of game benchmarks as well, comparing um, before and after of the beta BIOS and GPU drivers. All right, let's jump over and take a look at this stuff. All right, let's jump over here and take a look at the actual changes here in Legion Space. And it does look a good bit different in our flyout or quick access menu here. And at the top, you do have those controller battery uh, indicators here, plus our normal battery indicator, which will stay at the top all the time now, easy to see. We've got our performance modes, which now include those custom one and custom two modes, performance mode and um, power saving mode here. And on the two customs, you can just select custom one or two make the changes that you want and then those will stick that way and I've been playing around with this for a couple hours and it's actually been working really well and a lot of the TDP issues I was having in handheld mode while unplugged have been solved for me along with BIOS and drivers and things like that. In our general area it's very similar except now we can switch down to our 60 hertz from 144 without having to plug in the device or go into the Windows menus which is really nice. Everything else here pretty much the same uh, as before, except keeping those indicators at the top. For our controller, we have in here Xbox and View so that you can see all the uh, gamepad mode mappings here. Then we go back over into controller. They've also moved the touchpad, enable touchpad toggle over here in controller. And then we have our vibration and lighting effects. Now we have this new system quick settings, which is the stop gap, as they say, between being able to map out our own shortcuts much more comprehensively on the device. So this is a nice little way uh, that I appreciate them throwing in here uh, to be able to get to at least some of the shortcuts that we might want to, to set. There's a ways to go with this, but at least it's a start while they're working on getting the more custom and in-depth mapping and, and that type of thing. So I do appreciate them at least getting something out there to help alleviate some of the issues we have with some of the, the mapping and hotkeys and everything else here, pretty much the same with our help center and productivity mode there. So definitely coming along, there's a lot more work to be done uh, for sure, but I do like the direction they're going and what I'm seeing in here. Now going into the settings, we'll just go over to the lighting and I'll switch over to the new spiral rainbow uh, real quick in customize. We'll go in to customize our lighting here, come down to the bottom, select effects, spiral rainbow, and then you can change the brightness and the speed and uh, do whatever you want there with that. So not a big deal, but they did add that in there um, in the customized lighting effects. So that's pretty much the changes in Legion Space. It's changed quite a bit from launch, which is a good thing. They've got a ways to go there, but I like what I'm seeing so far, and I'm glad they got this update out pretty quickly here for the beginning of December. And with the roadmap they have laid out over the next four to six weeks, we have some more good updates uh, coming to the go here into Legion Space. Now, I've also been testing the new beta BIOS and beta GPU drivers and testing it up against some other benchmarks I had taken right before the update. So let's go ahead and get in and take a look at those. Now, Cyberpunk is one I had done. I had just done 1080p benchmarks right before I updated to beta BIOS and GPU drivers. So I just ran them all again uh, with the updates to see what I would get. And it really depends on what game I test and get into as to whether or not I'm just seeing the same performance or slightly better performance or potentially even worse performance as that can happen with updates. With Cyberpunk, it was largely the same performance. I ran a benchmark quite a few times. Uh, I went over into Motorsport. This game has actually benefited the most from this new GPU driver and beta BIOS update. Um, they do say some even even more um, t uh, performance tweaks and stuff are coming when the stable version comes out or the official version, but Motorsport definitely saw the most improvement, especially for FPS uh, overall when it uh, came to these updates and, and checking this out. So uh, newer games especially uh, often benefit from these driver updates more than the older games. So 38 versus 35 on our average actually there for that one. Now, Assassin's Creed was weird because you'll see how the shadows and textures finish loading in. And I ran this benchmark like six times and it did that every time with this new update. So that I found a bit interesting with the beta GPU drivers and beta BIOS. Other than that, though, the performance was pretty similar, although I would say a little bit better um, 
by just a very little bit on the uh, older uh, version, but pretty much similar. It was just that oddity of the textures and shadows loading in no matter what. Uh, when it comes to Mortal Kombat 1, this is an interesting one because this game just tests really odd anyway on different systems. But as I ran this through here quite a few times and checked out performance of the uh, beta BIOS and beta GPU drivers versus the older stable ones I was on. Uh, for the most part, it was very similar performance, but again, it did seem like at times the older um, setup had a little bit better performance, and it usually was ahead by just a little bit in the average FPS as well, but only by one FPS. So as you can see, for the most part, it's, it's a mixed bag. Uh, Motorsport definitely saw a nice improvement. I think a lot of other newer games, if I tested them and compared, probably would as well. Cyberpunk was pretty much the same. Assassin's Creed was pretty much the same. MK1 was a little bit worse, but I've seen that with updates on other systems as well. It's kind of an odd one uh, there, but that just gives me an idea of what we're looking at here. And these aren't even the official releases yet. They are the betas. And they did say that the official releases should actually be even better than what we have here. So I thought it was nice to compare those. But anyways, guys, thanks a lot for coming and check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.